Configuring your Comrex access rack mount codec is a very simple process and you can have it done in just a few short minutes. But you'll need a few things to start. First of all, you're going to need an IP connection, preferably with a static IP address as opposed to a dynamic IP address. But if you need a more detailed description of a static versus dynamic IP address, you'll find that in the manual included in the box on page 15. It would also be helpful if you had a desktop or a laptop computer with a web browser so you can connect to the access codec after you've done the initial configuration. The initial configuration can be done one of two ways. You can either use the console connection interface or you can use Comrex's Comrex Device Manager software. To start out with, we'll show you how to configure your access codec with the console connection interface. Before you can configure your access rack mount codec, you're going to need to take it out of the box. So let's go ahead and do that and find out what comes with your access rack mount. Before you do, I want to point out that it's probably a good idea to save the packing material in the carton that it came in because it's a really good way to ship your unit if you need to send it out to a remote site or to another location or if you need to send it back to Comrex for any reason. The first thing you'll notice are a couple of cables. There is a six foot uh, RJ11 telephone cord for your POTS modem. There is a six foot ethernet cable and there's also an AC power cord. We'll set these off to the side for a moment. There are two pieces of cardboard on the side to help keep the unit from shifting while it's being shipped. We'll put those off to the side and just pull this whole section straight out and set the carton off to the side. The easiest way to get the rack mount out is to take this piece and flip it over and pull out these two pieces so that they're flat on the table. These two side pieces flip open and now you can reach in and grab the manual and the access rack mount and simply pull it out and you can reuse this piece later for shipping. And we'll set this off to the side. So here's your access rack mount and we'll just go over the connections on the back. Here's your AC mains power. You have your audio connections for stereo analog in, stereo analog out, AES in and out. You have serial data, your POTS modem, your PS2 connections for keyboard and mice, and a monitor connection for your VGA monitor, and your ethernet connection and some USB connections, serial data as well. And you also have a fabulous manual, which is a great resource if you have any configuration questions in the future. So to configure the unit, you'll need just a few simple things. First of all, you're gonna need a uh, USB or PS2 style mouse. You'll need a USB or PS2 style keyboard and a VGA computer monitor. And let's go ahead and get that configured right now. So we've completely taken everything out of the box and we're ready to begin configuration. Uh, we already have some cables set up, so we're going to take our power cable, our Ethernet cable, and our POTS modem cable, set them off to the side, and we'll come back and we'll talk to you about how to set up a POTS modem configuration a little bit later. Also, uh, we're going to set our manual off to the side, but remember you want to keep this around so you can refer to it from time to time for some of the more advanced configurations. It's a very good resource to have on hand. First of all, we're going to start out by connecting our VGA monitor output. Quite simply, you plug it into the VGA input connection right there. Next, we're going to plug in a USB mouse, and I have a USB wireless mouse, but you could also use a PS2 style mouse and plug that into the PS2 style connection. And then a USB style keyboard. You don't need to have both, but it is helpful um, for configuration purposes. Next, we're going to connect our IP connection into the Ethernet port, which is right here. And finally, after we get that connected, we're going to connect our power connection. And it'll take just a few moments for your access rack mount to boot. After your Comrex access rack mount has booted up, the first screen that will appear is the remotes tab or the remote connection screen. But to configure the IP address information, you're going to want to go to the network menu, which is on the left-hand side at the top. So just with your mouse, click on network, and then you want to select manage networks. Your choose network screen will appear and it'll show you ethernet port and POTS modem. 
and we're going to make sure that uh, Ethernet port is selected. And to configure it, you're going to want to click on the configure button in the lower left hand corner of the screen. Once you do that, you'll notice you have two tabs. There's a general connection tab, which gives you a, a place to enable the device and also name it. And also a TCP IP tab, which is where you'll do your IP configuration. So click on TCP IP and you'll notice you have a drop down menu that gives you a few choices. Static IP address, DHCP, PPPoE, and gateway. PPPoE and gateway are advanced topics which are covered in the manual, which we won't cover here. But for this purpose, we'll start out with DHCP. This is the default mode that your unit ships in. If you're going to be configuring it for a static IP address, you want to select static address. At this point, it's a good idea to have the work order that the internet service provider has given you because it'll have the uh, IP address information, subnet mask, and other details that you need to configure the device. If you're not comfortable with configuring the static IP address settings for an application like this, it might be a good idea to talk to an information technology professional or a local computer guy who can give you a hand. But if you have the information, you simply enter it on the screen, IP address in the IP address window, the network mask, default gateway. DNS is not critical, but if you have it, it might be a good idea to go ahead and put that in there. To save the information, you just click on save in the lower right hand corner and you're configured and ready to go. Once you've saved your static IP address settings on your Comrex Access, you'll notice two things. First of all, in the lower right hand corner, there's a small chain link icon indicating a solid link. So that means that your IP connection has been established. Above the configuration and disable enable buttons, you'll notice current address is displaying the current IP address, also showing that your IP connection has been established. So let's go ahead and test your IP connection to make sure that we can connect to another device remotely. First of all, we're going to connect to the, or we're going to select the remotes tab by using our mouse and clicking on remotes and then manage connections. You'll notice that there are two Comrex Lab connections. The first one is Comrex Lab Voice, which is playing voice, and Comrex Lab Music. Both of these devices are in our facility in Devons, Massachusetts, and you can use them to test your connection. So we'll, connect, we'll select on Comrex Lab Voice and simply hit the green connect button. And you'll notice that it says connected. If you hit the plus sign just to the left of that, it'll show you the IP address that it's connected to and it shows you that it's transmitting and receiving. And in the lower right hand corner, there's a VU showing that we're receiving audio from the remote side. So that's how you configure your Comrex Access with the console connection interface. Now we'll show you briefly how you configure your access rack mount with our Comrex Device Manager software. So now we know how to configure the Comrex Access rack mount with the console connection interface. Now let's take a look at how to configure it with the Comrex Device Manager software application. You can easily download this software from the Comrex website in the support section. Once you've done that, you're going to need to put it onto either a desktop or a laptop PC that's connected to the same physical network as your Comrex Access rack mount. You can also simulate that by using a laptop and connecting it from the Ethernet port to the Ethernet port on the Access rack mount with a common crossover cable. Once you've downloaded the Comrex Device Manager application and put it on the desktop, simply use your mouse and double click on the icon for the Device Manager software. To find your access rack mount, simply click on the button that says Scan for Devices. It'll look across the network and it'll actually find all of the access devices that are connected to that network. In this case, we're going to configure our access rack mount by going down to the configuration section, which is in the middle of the application, and clicking on the configure button. Now you have a choice of choosing between DHCP and static. If you still have your static IP address information, simply click on the static IP radio dial and then enter the information into the window that's available there. Once you've completed that, click OK and your device will be configured. Simply close the Comrex Device Manager software and open up a web browser. To test your connection, simply type in the static IP address of the access rack mount that you've just assigned and it will open up a splash screen to the Comrex Access Rack Mount. Type in any username 
and the default password for your Access Rack mount is Comrex, C-O-M-R-E-X. Simply click the Login button and it'll open up the Comrex Access web interface. To test your connection, simply choose between either the Comrex Lab voice or the Comrex Lab music, select, and then click on the green Connect button. You'll notice that it says Connected, and we can go to the Audio Metering tab to see the audio, and also the Statistics page to see the network activity uh, and the delay jitter window. Now that we've shown you both ways to easily configure your Comrex Access rack mount, it'd be a good idea to explore some of the other how-to videos that show you the different features of the Access system.